On Sports News, Kayode will be telling us why the Badminton Federation of Nigeria is heading to Thailand. Thank you very much, Melinda. Welcome to Sports News. The Badminton Federation of Nigeria is expected to be in Thailand on Sunday to defend the country's bid to host the All-Africa Senior Badminton Championship in 2019. BFN President Francis Ovi told Charles Television that the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development has approved its bid to host the championships. Obi also confirmed that negotiations are already ongoing with the Chinese Badminton Association for Technical and Logistics Assistance. In England, Stoke City have become the first team to be relegated from the English Premier League following a 2-1 loss to Crystal Palace. Elsewhere, West Brom played off relegation or stayed off relegation for another match day with a last gasp of 1-0 win over Tottenham. Southampton battled a one-all draw against Everton to climb out of the relegation zone on goal difference ahead of Swansea who lost by a lone goal to Bournemouth. West Ham beat Leicester City 2-0 at the King Power while Watford beat Newcastle United by two goals to one. And former Manchester United boss Sir Alex Ferguson has had emergency surgery for a brain hemorrhage. A United statement said the procedure had gone very well and that the 76-year-old needs a period of intensive care to optimize his recovery. Sir Alex was recently seen at Old Trafford last Sunday during United's clash with Arsenal. Ferguson won 13 league titles in 26 years with Manchester United before stepping down in 2013. And Stephen Gerald has defended his appointment as a Rangers manager, insisting inexperience is no issue for him at all. The former Liverpool and England captain will take up his first managerial role in June, and that's on June the 1st, after agreeing a four-year deal at Ibrox. Gerard has been working as an academy coach at Liverpool since April last year. Away from football, Italy's Ilia Viviani has won stage two of the Giro d'Italia in Tel Aviv. Viviani came from a long way back to hit the front with 100 meters to go and crossed the line ahead of fellow Italian Jakub Maresco. Uh, Australian Rohan Dennis of BMC Racing takes the overall race lead from defending champion Tom Dumoulin after finishing in the peloton and will wear the pink jersey on Sunday. With love from Tel Aviv is a, is, a, is a wrap on sports news. Many thanks for watching. I'm Kai Dialandi. Melinda is back in just a moment. John Many thanks, Kai Well, there's been one too many mining disasters in South Africa, and the latest has claimed seven lives, while six others are recovering in hospital after being trapped on the ground for two days. Thirteen miners have been trapped at the mine located west of Johannesburg on Thursday after an earthquake caused a collapse in the country that is home to the world's deepest mines. The death toll stood at four yesterday, but the last three miners still trapped died from their injuries. President Cyril Ramaphosa hopes an investigation into the disaster would identify the cause of the incident and lead to solutions that will address the rate of death in South African mines. It's also a sad tale in western Pakistan where at least 16 miners have died in a cave-in triggered by a gas explosion. The incident in the mineral-rich province has left nine people injured. Officials are recovering the bodies of the victims and taking them to hospital. Mines in Balochistan province have poor safety records. Only in 2011, a gas explosion killed more than 40 people. 
In the United States, a number of strong earthquakes have hit Hawaii's big island a day after the eruption of a volcano. One earthquake, a 6.9 magnitude southeast of the volcano, was the most powerful to hit the United States since 1975. It briefly caught power and sent people fleeing from buildings, but there was no tsunami warning. Meanwhile, there were several fresh eruptions sending up mountains of lava 30 meters, destroying several homes and leaving holes on many streets. The Civil Defense Agency has asked any remaining residents to evacuate. And let's head to Russia, where opposition demonstrations have been held for two days just before President Vladimir Putin is to be sworn in for his fourth term in office. Alexei Navalny, who was prevented from standing in the election in March, is organizing the protest. But he was arrested as soon as he arrived in Moscow. Dozens have been arrested at demonstrations across the country. Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny and hundreds of anti-Kremlin activists were detained by police on Saturday during street protest against President Vladimir Putin ahead of his inauguration for a fourth presidential term. Mr. Navalny had called for people to take to the streets in more than 90 towns and cities across the world's largest country to register their opposition to what he says is President Putin's autocratic czar rule. The president won a landslide re-election victory in March, extending his grip over Russia for six more years until 2024, making him the longest-lasting leader since Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, who ruled for nearly 30 years. I stand against corruption. I stand against the authority that bans us from speaking, that bans us from expressing our views. The authorities just want more money and they want to get even more money from us. We just want a normal and good life, but we are not even allowed to express our opinions. Mr. Navalny, who was barred from running in the election against Mr. Putin on what he says was a false pretext, was detained soon after showing up on Moscow's central Pushkinskaya Square, where young people chanted, Russia without Putin, and down with the Tsar. Just before we go, we would like to inform our viewers on the UK platform that Channel's television has moved from Sky 575 to Sky 518 and Freesat 213. To get updates on local and international stories, you can watch us on those numbers. And the main news again. The All Progressives Congress today suspended its governorship primary in Ikiti State after thugs invaded the venue of the election in Adoikiti, the state capital. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Melinda Akinami. Good night.